to believe it's something smolder. something around smolder. Uh, but yeah, just like in general, you look through. Uh, wow. wow. Okay, okay, okay. That's interesting. Salty run back. Seems like that's the case. And anytime you go into a best of five in game two, it's like, well, our entire scrim week was based around this perception. We don't want to change it off one game. And they had a really weird start to that first game. So it might be the case. And with how FBI is playing, I don't know yeah. how you guys feel about it. His smolder gameplay throughout the split, I've been impressed with. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and he's progressively getting better at the pick. Yes. You can see mm -hmm. he's getting more efficient with clearing each wave. Uh, this was what we were, this hover is what we were talking about in game one could be a potential change. Because when you take away the Tom Kench, you're locking yourself into a uh, melee bot lane and Senna Seraphine historically has been good against the melee bot lanes. The fact that they're hovering this long though makes me feel like I've wasted time, but there it is. Oh, wow. That's the, that's the they did lock it in, yeah. And I'm kind of surprised only because the talking to players about new Seraphine, they don't really seem to like her yeah. nearly as much. Um, and we'll see what, happens with this 100 Thieves bot lane, I am very interested to see that they just didn't pick Smolder for themselves because I fully expect that third pick on red side yeah. for NRG to be Smolder. And then River coming out with the Lee Sin is really interesting. We were talking about how maybe Jax isn't it if only because he should get so involved with his lanes early. Um, but then you brought up, I mean, Quid's to Leah was still amazing, so. We'll see how that works out for 100 Thieves as well. Boss Smolder, don't no. think so, buddy. We're making no. sure that that's not happening. No. Uh, but the Smolder pick is going to come through anyways. And this is going to be interesting for me because 100 Thieves are basically saying that this was just a, a, an objectively strong lane versus Tom Kench lanes. Mm -hmm. that they feel as though Senna plus, in this case, it's Seraphine, but any mage slash enchanter would just be able to provide a lot more during the laning phase. And then team fights theoretically before Smolder gets obnoxious should be able to give them control. but. It's a, it's interesting that they're holding firm on that belief after last one. Yeah, and I think what, um, I mentioned this prior to the break, but I do think there is a lot more that 100 Thieves can do with this Senna bot lane. They can rotate the Senna around if they want to. They can heavily, more heavily prioritize grubs or, um, you know, just rotating her around the map a lot more frequently. I think there are so many, there's still so many things you can do with a Senna in your composition, especially if you want to go for really high powered solo lanes, which is how 100 Thieves naturally like to play. Yeah, and as a uh, Senna Seraphine enjoyer myself, I think there are <laughs> specific team comps in which it's better. I really like it with diving bruisers. So mm -hmm. Lee Sin actually doesn't fit amazingly to me. Weirdly enough, something like Jax or Viego would be better, but mm -hmm. I can understand you want the early game power of the Lee Sin. But in terms of top lane matchups, like the Aatrox ban, I think is very good by energy because that's almost the perfect type of top lane champion you want when you have essentially double enchanter bot. And it usually works with what 100 Thieves would like to pick when they have the Seraphine. Like Aatrox is one as you had mentioned, but another pick that I, that's still out on the table is the Yone from Quid. Yep. So usually that's really good with this. Yeah. So they usually they run that with the composition easier to reach the back line. The only concern is going to be if you're playing Yone, obviously you are just diving straight into the linear line, which is going to be easier for Ari to deal with in fights, but also for Tom Kench to be saving Smolder if you're doing it right from the jump in the fight. So we've already talked about, yeah. and I love this side. Oh, Jax. Or mid, be... who knows? It's probably Jax top though. Leasing. That's true. But yeah, just going to be interesting to see how uh, uh, FBI ends up positioning with the pick. Going to be really important. Let's see what the last pick wants. Uh, it's looking like 100 Thieves. Yeah, so I mean, it's likely the blind pick Jack's top, and now they're able to pick into the Ari, unless they've gone off the rails. This is more of a, uh, this is more of them trying to remind energy of what happened. Locked in! Yeah, he's back! No, oh, it's locked in. We got Vigar so mid. Weird. Yeah, I think it's, it's historically good into Ari. I don't know if it's good into Ari now. I remember this last build on that one was uh, the tank build on Vagar. Yep. So it was more haste, of course, and also just harder to be able to chip down. Yeah. Mm. I think the big carry kind of that you're facilitating, obviously the Vigar, but then the Jax. And, and we'll a gangplank from Dokla. From Dokla. So reaching back for old school things that could actually get early lane push against the Jax. I'm I'm always curious in these Senna Seraphine compositions, Emily. Like usually Senna Seraphine means we win 5v5. And then the yep. other team tries to pick better split push. But this energy team also incredibly powerful 5v5. So we could be in for a very team fight heavy game. That's it from the lounge. Casters, what do you think? 
Thank you, Jad and friends over at the lounge. We're here with the dive cast once again, going into game two. Immediate thoughts on the draft. What do you guys think? Well, I haven't seen a GP in a while outside of solo queue. That's kind of interesting to see. Uh, will it or will it not be smoldering time in game two? Oh, I mean, it, it is by default. I think smoldering time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Gangplank ultimate also helps out smolder for bottom side. As long as Gangplank can just chill on top side um, and then use ultimate to have another form of wave clear for the smolder. Not only can you call your mom, but you can call your dad Gangplank too. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, how's that work? <laughs> anyway. Eh, it works. Have you... <laughs> I think the big if there is if top lane can be stable though, because yeah. I don't see Jax versus GP as a farm lane, especially not with these junglers, Lee Sin no. versus Sin Jiao. I, I expect. Sniper doesn't see it as a farm lane. Oh, no, I mean, I, <laughs> neither of them should. I expect to see quite a bloody top lane. Well, and especially just in, in melee matchups versus GP, if you try to make it a farm lane, you lose. Yep. He's just going to be queuing you on cooldown and harassing you. You need to take trades. You need to be able to jump forward on him and get somewhat aggressive, or you just get pounded under your tower, right? Like you can't allow GP to just have that free lane, so it will be bloody. Uh, I will say this is going to be a much harder lane for Smolder down in 2v2. Uh, there is not a freebie champion to farm off of. There's no like orange to just get Q stacks off of in the early game. It is double range now. Uh, so there is going to be more poke. There is going to be more harassment that's coming through. Yeah, Seraphine got four, five paragraphs of changes in 14.5 uh, in, in attempts to take down the power of, as we're getting a lot of champions on screen right now, uh, I think we have double overlay. Uh, we'll get that fixed up, but we have to go to Raz with 100 of Thieves coach, Golden Glue. What's up? I got Golden Glue for this interview here. Uh, quick question. You got some change-ups in the draft, Vagar being one of them, and the other one actually letting the smolder through again. Just thoughts on that? Yeah, Smolder was a big uh, problem last game. We kind of got outscaled by it. Um, this game, we picked more scaling, obviously, with a Vigar and Seraphine. So I think we can still pressure to Smolder early. Um, but this game, we have better scaling to match it. Okay. Second question, just simple. How's River feeling? Of course, just because I heard you guys didn't get much practice with him, with uh, him being sick. Uh, I think he's feeling OK. I think uh, we feel a little like under the weather. But uh, I think last game, the main problem was like uh, the Jacks just probably wasn't the best pick. We probably could have banned differently in four or five. Um, so this game, I think he's set up more for success. Sweet, thanks a lot. You can go for it. I right, appreciate you. So I want to I want to talk a bit about the Seraphine changes because there's so many of them. I know a lot of people didn't read them, um, but there are some specific ones that adjust how easy it is to CS. The damage to minions for your passive was taken down also on the Q. But one big thing for the Q, it used to prevent minions from dying to other minions while the Q was in, in flight so that it was easier for people to see us. They took that away. So we'll see if that actually affects Ayla's CSing at all. I mean, he's against the Tom Kench and Smolder here. I, I don't think it'll be a problem uh, for a pro player and they are still going to get the push even with the reduced uh, damage to minions, but uh, definitely something to keep in mind if he does have less gold than usual. What do you think about this? So River did the exact same clear that he did last time. Three camp spot, bases, gets a longsword, goes top. Yeah, I'm not really sure why he's doing the recall there. Yeah, like, uh, we never really see this. I think, so if you do Raptors, Red, Krugs, usually your two options are a bot gank afterwards. Well, I guess three options, bot gank, mid gank, or invade. I guess if you don't think either lane is invadable or would require a counter gank and since you have started blue that this is fine but it does seem a little weird that he opted to do this both games yeah it's he with his timing it actually works out fine so then he ends up here with a long sword and you see Jax right now mm -hmm. sniper is going uh, to find contracts who's finishing his Krugs as contracts goes back in for it oh i wanted to see the mini Krugs. all oh, there's so much gold in those nobody pays attention to those but 14 gold each those things are not pennies on the ground i, I had it on my screen sniper got a couple of them and he's gonna have to flash over the wall but contracts might be able to just follow him we'll see there's the flash and there is the follow and sniper is looking like he's gonna go down it's a solo kill for the jungler at 350 into the game when's the last time you saw that get that the is, hell out of my jungle that I is know the that craziest feeling. way to die bro like <laughs> 
What oh. was that? Oh my god, that was one for the junglers all over the place. Uh, <laughs> I, I felt that one. All these top laners have constantly been invading junglers for so long. You know, the level one invades, then we have the, the push up here invade on those on, bullies. Quit uh, picking yeah. on the jungle. Uh, on Krugs, but Contra is like, all right, you just used your counter strike. Found you, and he's not going to give up on the chase. I guess maybe you could be like, uh, if if River was there, you know, maybe it, it could have been dangerous. Oh, what if he baited you or something? Yeah. But so contracts was not second guessing that. He nope. was he was kicking that Jax out of the jungle. Definitely a, a pretty big oopsie. We also have to talk a little bit more about the bot lane as well because it has been pivotal for both of these two teams. This has been uh, the bot lane different matchups as we have Sniper on the oh. run going to be punk chunked out, and this is actually rough because they could dive this, and he has no TP. If he gets dove here, has to back off even. Be really rough, but they are worried about where Lee Sin could be. If Lee Sin was behind him, it would not go well. They are picking assist on the Grubs too, but the top crab was picked up by River here, so they don't care. <laughs> oh, there's the flash forward from Ayla. It's going to cause the response there. As uh, Hui flashed in on Ayla, Ayla flashes out to try to get to safety. It is a Swifty Boots rush there for Meech. Uh, Ayla has not actually taken the time to go back to base just yet, and is of course the farming Seraphine as expected. Uh, that is going to be getting pressured here until Sen is back in lane. Yeah, I I feel like that was kind of a bullet dodged by Sniper there. That situation just seems so scary. You know, you've lost your, your TP and Flash. You have a huge wave yeah. stacking against you, uh, and he actually just bluffed it, staying under the turret there. I think Energy probably could have dove him, but it wouldn't have been clean, and not knowing where Lee Sin is. I think that's just, again, shows the importance of hiding information as a jungler, right? Because if a River had walked somewhere carelessly and revealed where he was, like if they knew he was on bot side, I think Sniper's game is actually over there if he gets dope. Yeah, that, that would have been real bad. Um, but usually that's how top lane works. Like your first death when you have TP, it's not a big deal. But if, if something bad happens again right after that, like yeah. it's, it's time to go next. Let's see if they get repeat ganks on him while his flash is down too, because flash They're looking. was blown there. Uh, is going to be spotted. Does he have a ward in pocket? He does not. They don't know that he doesn't have a trinket ward, but that's actually um, pretty big as you can just obviously leap strike to safety in a lot of cases. But now you're in this awkward spot where it's kind of stuck outside of GP's tower. Also, other big thing about the early game for these team compositions, whenever you have a Vagar mid, you're not doing a lot of roaming, and the Ari should have uh, bigger possibilities of making plays with Oh, they're going to drop the ulti here. River's here, but Contract is here as well. They're both getting incredibly low, and Joker's going to go for it. There's a flash to follow from River, and he takes him down, hits him with a cripple to slow him, and then in goes Contract now. He's going to try to take the 1v2, but the counter going to be back up here soon, I think, from Sniper, and Contract may have bitten off more than he can swallow. Contract! goes too oh, far the cooldowns come back up and he gets taken down now does palafox want a piece is he gonna go in as well don't think he should and quits arrives so not gonna be any more action disaster for energy there the the idea of the play was good but the execution just wasn't there Doklo went a little too early contracts wasn't close enough uh, and then River just killed him. I think contracts, that was a little bit of like the guilt play. It's like, oh man, I don't want to- Sorry, bro, don't worry, yeah, I got let it. Let him get away. Yeah. <laughs> How could you just do that to my top laner? Oh, whoops, I made it worse. Um, honestly though, big credit to River, because River coming around the edge there, Doklo walking up, wasn't wasn't ready for that. River flashes in, gets the punish. Um, I wonder if we can get a vision toggle. Uh, it's probably too late right now. Nice. Oh, here we go. So this is MVP exactly what servers. I wanted. This is uh, exactly what I wanted, it, MVP River, because he walks up and he he skirted that vision it was so smart he came through lane by the way so he he knew he wasn't going over wards going through lane and then he goes around that little alcove uh and just just on the edge of vision so dokla didn't know until it was too late and he followed the flash then you know it's yeah the follow-on kind of tiltish play that you Ooh. guys are talking about yeah that i mean that hurts i think that if, if I was their coach doing this review, I think Dokla may have gone a little bit too early yeah. because the timer you have for that play is Jax needs to clear the wave, get his wave to crash. He still had all the range minions to get through, so Dokla didn't actually need to all in right away. He could have waited for contracts to get closer, but uh, obviously not what happened, and uh, yeah, pretty rough. It's, it's tough, right? Because he, I think he felt like, oh, he just jumped forward, he just used his leap strike, he just used his counter strike, now is my time to go, right? He doesn't have a way to leap strike back out of safety. Uh, but obviously, River, you know, beat them to the punch. It was there first, and at the end of the day, it is River that comes away with both of the kills. 
At the very least, I think I'm really happy that Jax didn't get those kills. Because if I'm GP and Jax got both those kills, I don't want to play the game anymore. So uh, it's going to be at least a little bit of a consolation there for them. But we'll see what River can get done with it. Because he has been, I would say, one of the best junglers in the league at actually snowballing these advantages. Yeah, you say that until the River goes legendary. <laughs> this Lee Sin's all over the place. They're going back top lane, though. The least it's not in my lane. <laughs> yeah. I can't see the problem. It's not my problem. Exactly. I just close my eyes a little bit. We squint, don't see the problem. Here's Senna on the roam. This has been one of the big talks about Senna versus Smolder is the fact that Smolder's locked to bot lane. Senna just moves around the map. Of course, Seraphine is more easily dove than like a Nautilus or a Tom Kench, but we know that both supports have made that roam. So Ayla not really going to be uh, under threat whatsoever here, I don't think. Are both mid laners running Spellbook this game? It is Spellbook for both mid laners, yes. Interesting. I haven't seen that too much recently used to be a thing but uh i feel like it's it just just the thought of it's gonna be an uninteractive matchup maybe can't get anything done so you can kind of have a little bit of additional value perhaps later on you know swap over doing sauce at a key moment or something like that definitely uh hundred thieves gonna stop the uh energy from getting six scrubs i think it's probably smart for energy not to contest this Man, it, it, it's tough being the jungler on the GP side of this top lane matchup because it's a volatile lane, but Jax can force it much harder than GP can. Yeah. So, you know, like you want to be hovering, but you can't just completely neglect your camps. Yeah, and Dokla senses the dive coming, so he's going to drop the ulti to clear out the rest of the wave, but they're already behind him. Contracts is here to try to reinforce, and so is Palafox, and there's the kick in from River, but the Spear Rush gonna get popped. In comes the Dawning Shadow to try to keep River alive, but it's a shutdown, and it goes to GP. That is huge. Palafox now gonna look for another charm. We'll see if they can actually dodge out on it. Holding it, being very patient. There's the Flash, or Flash response comes in from Meech. Nicely done, and the Barrel is gonna be able to pick up another as the Parlay comes through, and Meech just gets exploded. Wow, that was so smart from Energy. Do you see how early they called to cover this topside play? And, and then they're all coming up and Pal Oh, hey, look at look here. He has ult. He's going to go for it. We'll see if he can actually connect on the ulti. Doesn't actually send it. I thought he was going to go for sure. Uh, instead, it's just going to be the mom traded out for a little bit of a heal. Pretty surprised. I thought he might have been able to have an angle to go for it there. But I guess because he didn't have his, his passive stacked up, he didn't have an empowered ability right away. Didn't think he'd go for it. Here is the replay one more time from top lane. So Sniper pushing it up, as you're talking about, on the Jax, trying to force it. And then River comes around through the jungle, but they did see Meech also coming up through River. So uh, that causes energy. Three members coming over to counter the play. Contracts from the top side, power back from bottom. And if you kick the Ari, just ult right back, no problem for him. And they get the chase down here. It, this is what I'm talking about when it's so painful. You're, we're talking about, you know, viewpoints of junglers and like, oh man, my GP side is so hard to play. Well, if the opponents have the Vagar and you have the Ari, you're like, yes, hell yes. Yeah. I've got the Ari who can roam first. I've got the Ari who can set up so many plays. And that right there was, you know, uh, an Ari versus Vagar moment where Vagar had been farming mid, Ari comes up and they get the bounty off of River. Oh, then they get the shutdown for Sniper, though. Oh, no. Oh. That is a disaster for Dokla. He That's got two really kills off that last. Kill. Yeah, he got two kills off the last play. Finishes as the Reaper, had double buffs, and then gives it up there to Sniper. Just a little bit overconfident, stepping too far forward, and Sniper's able to finish him off with an easy jump in. Another solo kill from the LCS solo kill leader, Sniper. Yeah, you know, I was going to give Dokla... Well, I mean, he still does deserve a lot of credit for the previous play. I think the awareness to ult the wave and keep it from crashing and then his, his barrel combo to finish off Meech was really clean. Um, but, you know, that's the thing with GP. He's a very, very mechanically oh. demanding champion. It's pretty easy to mess Alphox up. is looking and that barrel combo did connect, so Sniper could be in trouble. River gonna try to get in here. A nice dodge there on the charm as Palfox was guessing and he gets wrong. The spear rush not gonna be enough and now the sidestep on the win becomes lightning. Contract's gonna have to pop the Crescent Guard to run out of there, but Quid is coming in. Is he gonna look for a flash cage? We'll see. Down in bot lane, another fight breaking out. Contract's in trouble, no Crescent Guard. He's gonna get first down immediately. And now Dokla in trouble, trying to battle it out. Can't take down River. He's gonna stay in live. And 100 Thieves pushing down on bot side as well. That was a massive swing as it has just been a bloodbath up in the top lane. And Sniper versus Dokla, these are two of our, our most aggressive top laners. These are two of the guys who are going for those solo kills time and time again. So brutal there. Just pretty much everything going wrong for energy. Uh, good response to the play from uh, 100 Thieves. 
Sniper was able to juke out the charm from Palafox. Uh, this was the previous solo kill. Yeah, the one that he, we saw. Sniper's been really good with the barrel game too. Mm -hmm. I, I like how they showed the barrel game leading up to this and him blowing the flash for flash trade onto Dokla uh, so that he knew he could go in for this kill. Yeah, so here is that following play now. As Palafox, he was trying to predict, I think, on, on, yeah. the, on the jump there, trying to predict maybe a flash or a leap strike or something. Unfortunately, guess is wrong, doesn't have enough damage. Yeah, and, and River's there for the counter. The, the kick under tower makes it happen. And even though Contracts doesn't tunnel vision this time and try and go for the kill onto Sniper, they just chase him down. Quid, Quid has arrived in the game. The Vagar has arrived. Uh, the Rod of Ages was completed, so it started stacking now oh, as well. Ooh. And he's taking those hard. Holy contracts on, on some of those player reactions is looking down what in the dumps. You, would, you wouldn't think that they won the first game. There are some pretty rough plays for him. Like, you know, those hurt, like just getting clipped by two lease NQs in a row, just barely being not on time to the play. Maybe a little oh, frustrated. Look for a dive here on Liquid, who does have flash, does have heal, but I don't know if it's going to matter. The cage going to buy him a little bit of time. The Senna all comes over the top, trying to shield himself up, but it's just not going to be enough. It's 3v1. There's nowhere for him to go. But now the question is, can the energy members get out? Who he's on the run, but in comes River, and now there's the kick back onto Contracts. Contracts goes over the wall there. With the wind becomes lightning. The Audacious Charge through in onto Meech. Just buys himself a little bit of a time as another kill there does go to River, so they do strike back, but... Back to the top lane, I mean, this is our, our number one and number two kill uh, leader, solo kill leader in the league. Certainly is, and it's showing up. You mentioned it. It's a war zone in the top lane this game, but the entire map has been a war zone, actually. And usually it's energy making these super aggressive plays. Um, they, they really have been in the full send mode, and they're the team that has the smolder. This time around, 120 stacks uh, at 1540, pretty mm -hmm. good. But they are facing a two dragon lead from 100 Thieves, a 2000 gold lead from 100 Thieves, and 100 Thieves have two stacking champions, not one this time around, with Quid going, with Rod of Ages, plus his Vagar passes stacking up to 180 already. Uh, so this time around, I think the small adjustments that 100 Thieves have made will mean that there is a very different mid and late game. It's definitely going to be a lot different, but Smolder still stacking pretty well. Not as fast as last game because he's not playing against the Orin to get all those free stacks. Uh -huh. But still, 124 stacks here yeah, at 16 Counter minutes. argument, Smolder. That's fair. Exactly. Fair <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they have this and they have this. They can play side lane. They have perfect control of dragons. Fair enough. The other team has Smolder. They're like, all right, I can see. Also, uh, we'll see about Dokla's, you know, mid and late game gameplay because mm -hmm. that's why Gangplank really shines when you get the huge barrel chains, um, catching people off guard, getting really big chunks. Rush control, obviously, early mm -hmm. timing to objectives makes it easier to hit those. But Ooh. it looks like 100 Thieves are going to burn through this one as well. This is a Shirelia's Ari. Yeah, I was looking at that. You know, it's something that has showed up in solo queue. I mean, people say it's it's an efficient item, like stat wise. Oh, flash in is. for Ari, trying to find that charm onto Ayla, but Ayla flashes out. Yeah, it is it is quite efficient, but obviously you're gonna deal a lot less burst than you would with a Lich Bane, with a Horizon Focus. I was actually gonna talk about how Quid is probably gonna build Australia's this game because we saw him do it last game, but Ari, I wasn't expecting. Yeah, we see all kinds of crazy builds on Vega because he gets so much AP from his passive. You don't necessarily need to build like glass cannon. Yep. Uh, so you'll see like supportive items, full tank items okay. on him. Like you can kind of just get whatever you want. Yeah, I'm down with glass cannon. I'm down with almost anything on Vagar actually. And Quid, you know, went into some tank items last time around. I actually really like tank items on him too, but I always want a death cap to yeah. multiply your passive AP. And he didn't do that last time around was, was my only gripe. Yeah, that, I, I didn't like the Landry's. I just felt like the Landry's last time should have been a death cap. Um, but either way, you know, it was a win for them. That was that Vagar Shaco game. Uh, he's going to complete his own Trillias now. Interesting fact for you guys. So obviously when Sniper is doing well, 100 Thieves are generally doing well. They're actually 6-1 when he gets a solo kill. All right, so uh, good, good odds. Sign. Good odds then. Good they, odds. Have, they have three dragons, uh, 2k gold lead, and a sniper solo kill. So mm -hmm. uh, check, check, check. All the objectives <laughs> yeah. so far taken. That's the quest. I have to say, though, the gangplank moments, I'm really looking forward to see if we do get one of those huge barrel chains. Like They can be game changing here. Yeah. And he does have his quick blades on top of uh, his essence reaver now, so he's starting to get there. They have a lot of AOE. I mean, between between the Smolder ulti, the GP ulti, you know, everything coming through over the top, Smolder Ws, the Q splash, like there's a lot of burst and a lot of poke uh, as well. 
And, you know, Palafox, I think maybe part of the, the thought process here is they have so much damage on their team with this comp that maybe he can just go Trellius. River going to have to disengage there with the kick. Trellius going to get popped, though. Palafox chasing on in. The exhaust going to get dropped on him. Mom comes over the top. Meech is there with his ulti of his own. Quid going to drop the cage. It's going to be a devour there. And Contract's going to dash back in with the Crescent Guard pop. Now the TPs are coming in as Jax is going to arrive. Just Half right. hundred thieves. Bit off more than they can chew. It doesn't look like it because Sniper is going to arrive. And I think Contracts now, he's going to be going down. And Hui might just be going down as well. He's going to try to take the gate out of there. But there's no shot of that. You can see how frantic they were in that team fight when they split. And Contracts went back in after he ulted. And, and Hui went to follow with him. And then the rest of the team went the other way. And there was for sure a split call on that one. Absolutely. I think the quid flank really threw them off. Vega yeah. is not a champion you typically see flanking. But... I, I mean, the Shrelias kind of lets you do that, right? Like, he's got ghost Shrelias. You're not really worried about being uh, ran yeah. down. Uh, and the execution for energy around the Vagar was kind of off, too. Like, you saw Tom Kench ate Ari, so he just didn't get immediately one shot by the ult. And then he spat him back out into the cage. And it was just kind of a mess all around by energy. Uh, not what you like to see. Yeah, they, they couldn't focus on who they wanted to turn on there. They're like, oh, we, we have someone here, right? and went too many directions. See about the reset though. Now into the side lanes. Uh, Vagar can also rely on the Shrelias a bit more. So maybe there's a more bonus points for it there where the active is pretty short cooldown and does give you some more options uh, kiting away in the, in the side lanes. And he's even putting pretty good pressure. Yeah, I mean, 100 Thieves now moving up into that top side jungle. River was moving up. They saw them going in there. So Palafox knows there is a potential he could get wrapped around on, is gonna have to pay respect to that and will just back it off. Contracts on the other side of the map gonna try to put pressure on a Sniper as they know 100 Thieves is in that top side jungle. But Sniper gonna be a really tough person to dive with just two, I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, energy is definitely uh, hesitant to go topside here because, you know, that Dragon Soul is coming up for them in just a little over a minute here. Now, I kind of like how 100 of these is playing this. They realize, you know, Dragon Soul, we can take it whenever. Uh, they're the ones feeling the pressure. Ayla's just going to give over a freebie there. Huh. As he kind of just walked up with no flash in a bad spot, gets caught and goes down in a hurry. And that is not the end of the world because he's going to be back up before the dragon, but definitely a silly death. Yeah, pretty, pretty chill kill. <laughs> Blame the Seraphine changes. <laughs> Wait, why are we building the Seraphine changes? <laughs> because he died. Because she got changed okay. and then he died. That, that's your excuse. Was it in the patch notes that your monitor turns off yeah. occasionally? Yeah. <laughs> he actually got more move speed, uh, by the way. So. Oh, so it was like too fast, too furious, hit yeah. the NOS, couldn't control it. Like, oh my yeah. goodness, this extra five move speed. It drove where, out of control. Where am I going? Oops, I'm dead. Oh, Understandable. Snipers may be a little in trouble here. Energy's looking for the pick. Yeah, they got the goon squad coming in. The team. TP even going to come in from Palafox. A TP here to respond. We'll see who's going to be able to take him down. Dokla going to drop the all, but Sniper is just turning and fighting into Dokla. Quid can't do anything. It's going to be a freebie there for energy. Big pick. This one in time to maybe earn them the dragon. We'll see if it is or not. Yeah, Jax is dead for 30, and he won't actually have TP on spawn. Uh, definitely raises the question for 100 Thieves here. Do you take this fight knowing energy used a bunch of cooldowns? They've got it. Go, they can't give them At least soul. go for a steal. You've got yeah. Lee Sin with Flash here. River can pull some tricks. Yeah, we'll see. Energy, you know, hovering well, it, around it be the sold side. 100 Thieves. Like, yeah. They don't really mind if uh, energy gets it. Yeah, well, energy. But if you're a hero, if you steal here. it, though, you steal the soul. Oh, true. <laughs> Wait. Oh, and Rook comes in, and they are going to be able to actually get it on the energy side, but are they going to be able to get out? Kuhi getting rooted up. Mom comes over the top. Dokla's already down. 100 Thieves looking like they're winning the fight. Contracts did get the dragon. Denies the soul. Cage going to catch Kuhi on the exit. It's a double kill there Baron. for River. And now they can just go to Baron. So that is a costly fight. They deny the soul, but they're going to lose the Baron and might just be the end of the game off that pretty much. Wow. 100 was... Thieves. They make the call to go for the kills instead, even with uh, being down one person. And it pays off huge. I mean, that was a full-on 4v5. And honestly, it, it was a smite fight. River was in range. Uh, contracts happened to get it, but yeah, not. I mean, and then River getting inside there on Dokla, killing him in the pit while the rest of the team is pushing off. We saw so much zoning when you have the Vagar Senna Seraphine still up. Even though they're, they're less numbers here, look at this. The AoE, the ultimate comes across. That looks so hard to play against. That was insane, yeah. Yeah, that is really, really rough. There's so much AoE between the cage, the Encore coming through from Seraphine. And the move speed, too. You've got 
Senna's E, Seraphine W, and the mm -hmm. Shirelias. You just got this ball comp with a lot of range, CC. Uh, yeah, a pretty nice team fighting comp behind the thieves here. And the uh, the Rod of Ages also popped for Quid. And Death Cap done too now. Now he's got Death Cap. All right, he made the only change I really wanted. He heard you. I love it, Quid. You're the goat. He's got 937 AP already. 300 from the passive, obviously, then being uh, multiplied there by the Death Cap as well. Has hit 16. That ulti is going to deal an absolute absurd amount of damage. It deals between 1,028 and 2,055 damage, uh, depending on their current HP. So pretty much QR could just be a dead smolder, honestly. So that is really, really tough to deal with and something he didn't have to contend with in that previous game. Like there is a lot of scaling. If you get chunked down a little bit, Faker could just flash ult you and you could just be gone if Hui is not really on point to devour you to save you from these abilities. But Falfox looking for Sniper. Great side steps on both the Orb of Deception and the Charm, but Dokla is here as well. How quickly can they take him down? Sniper gonna try to waste their time as the rest of his team is actually pushing up mid lane and Sniper is not going down in their hurry. I think eventually Energy will be able to get him, but how much are they gonna lose in the meanwhile as FBI gonna pop the ulti mid lane to try to clear out this wave. Energy do get the kill on Sniper, but it costs them a couple towers here in mid lane. And 100 Thieves pushing up, trying to take the most. They also have that wave down in bot to be able to rotate over. Dude, Quid Vagar is in their face, past the tower, threatening the cage, not letting them even move in to damage any of these barrened up minions. Andrax is caught and he's in trouble. The Crescent Guard gonna get popped to try to keep him safe in the midst of that cage as he knocks back River. River connects another Sonic Wave. He's gonna go in for the resonating strike, but FBI jumps back to save and FBI flashes forward and gets a big shutdown there for Smolder. Does get caught by the W from Vagar, though chunked down about half HP, so FBI has to be careful. On the other side, it's Dokla split pushing, picking up a turret bounty, so getting some gold back in their pockets will cost them the inhibitor, but I think they're going to be able to easily hold at the Nexus, and Dokla just got a lot of gold back for the team. FBI just got a massive shutdown as well. There's some signs of life here for energy. Yeah, I like that call by energy there. They recognize, you know, we don't need GP to come back. It's not that dire. We can we can hold our Nexus. We'll give the inhib. And uh, yeah, they managed to hold off the push pretty nicely, getting a kill back. That whole time I was just staring at Vagar, like he's holding a nuke in his hand <laughs> yeah. that ultimate, and I'm just wondering who he's throwing it at. It looked like he could have got Zen at one point, but I guess he was probably trying to save it for Smolder. Yeah. Uh, ended up not getting to use it. He hit Smolder at one point with a W and got him to about half. And I was wondering if there was an angle to go for, you know, just a flash R. I don't know if he knows for sure that it would kill him from that health, but Smolder has gotten the stacks. So 277 stacks. It's kind of up to FBI and Dokla, I feel like, uh, you know, to be able to, to really be that late game carry. I, I mean, we're getting to the point, even though 100 Thieves still have the gold lead uh, and we're not there yet, because Energy also has, you know, Gangplank and Smolder. It's like both teams arming the nukes and, and mm -hmm. getting ready. Uh, it's see see which ones hit first because Dokla now he's very rich got his collector as well yep the gangplank uh, quite rich here and we might get to see some of those late game uh, you know chains that we were looking for those game saving possibilities hundred thieves though still very much in the driver's seat here. 5k the gold lead after their Baron push. They still have the possibility of a soul coming up very shortly. Exactly, and that, that's the most difficult part here for energy is every five minutes you have to show up, you have to be able to fight that dragon, deny Hex Hex soul, and if you make a mistake there, the game's just gonna end because you have an open base now as well. Palafox, if he gets caught out here, it would be devastating, and River's gonna go forward. There's the kick. Sonic Wave connects, but he doesn't feel like he can take it through. Now gonna go in, Palafox dashes back, hits the charm, but the TP is coming in behind Palafox, and he's gotta flash out of there. Energy have gotta run, but Contracts is caught. Contracts is gone. That's at least Soul. But the question is, are they just gonna push and try to end the game? And 100 Thieves posturing aggressively look like they want to do just that. It's gonna be up to FBI and Dokla. They've gotta clear this wave. There's the GP ulti, gonna get dropped. The cage narrowly does not connect onto FBI. And FBI trying to soften up Sniper. Sniper gonna be able to jump back. It looks like NRG will hold here. But did 100 Thieves waste too much time? You know, can they actually buy time now for Contracts to come back up? Sniper gonna jump in. There's the Devour on FBI. And Sniper now in trouble. But Quit pushing FBI back as Sniper was in trouble with no Counter-Strike. Quit just steps forward and pushes the Smolder out. He I, knows. He's holding that nuke, like you said. He's threatening the launch. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll press the button. I, I kind of wanted to see them keep going with it. You know, like, using the first wave, they got one Nexus turret, and they had a new wave coming in. I, I would have liked to see them pressure there, but obviously it would have been risky. Uh, not a bad call. They just could fall back to Dragon. Yeah, and you got guaranteed soul if you just don't die, right? So they're going to be able to go back. Now they have that Hex Tech soul over the top, and they have some champions that really easily apply it. I like the Seraphine with the Empowered Q. It's so easy to just get a little bit of tick of damage. The passive autos as well from Seraphine, super long range. 
Um, so it's going to be very, very difficult for Energy now. Now, Energy have been our team that have had some of the biggest gold comebacks in the LCS, mm -hmm. not just this split, but throughout the history of this team. And a lot of those come from them getting really sneaky towards this stage of the game. Uh, they've been one of the best teams at carving out Fog of War and then going for those surprise plays. And they certainly do, yeah. as we went over, have some damage options to make some you know, game-saving picks. But right now, they're just getting pushed in and corralled. Well, they're stacking here, and they're going to look for a river. Contracts goes in, pops the Crescent Guard. In goes Palafox. They're trying to follow it up. But it's already the nuke gets dropped from Quid. FBI is just gone, and you feel like that could be the end of it. But Quid on the other side will fall as well. Dokla is still alive. He's got to get out of there. Got snipers flashing forward, trying to finish the game. Going to continue piling in. The tower only has one hit, but they don't even need it. There's the Encore coming out there from Ayla, trying to actually root him up. Not going to be able to do so, but Dokla is going to fall. No way out for him. Energy are gone. 100 Thieves should be able to tie this one up. They just need the minion wave. So they're going to have to do a little bit of waiting to do it, but it looks like it's theirs. I didn't even see what happened to FBI there. He, I just blinked and he was gone. <laughs> I think he just got flash ulted basically by Quinn. Just like yeah. Q all is, is what I assume happened because Quinn was in the back line. FBI was just deleted. And under Thieves marching on the Nexus. Great bounce back game from them. They left the smolder up. They made the adjustments they needed to. And they're going to be able to take a clean one as River kick flashes FBI in. Insult to injury. The smolder will die on the steps of the Nexus once more. 100 Thieves tied up one to one. Great game by River, I got to say. He looked super good on this Thieves. He was locked in for sure. And Already yesterday, we had one of the most exciting game, uh, series to watch. This one is going to deliver. They even it up 1-1 one, one here. Looking to go the distance again in the lower bracket. This one is an elimination series. So you must win or you are out of playoffs. A reminder to all you fans at home, you can cast your own votes for Key